as you may know the national assessment and accreditation council known as nac was established in 1994 so actually next year nac will be entering in its third, 30th year so completing three decades so after uh, i joined nac a uh, couple of uh, weeks ago uh, we decided to take a, uh, a review uh, of uh, three uh, decades you know Uh, and we realized that uh, nac has done a remarkable job uh, in india during these uh, three decades uh, while uh, still a lot of work still remains to be done now because national education policy uh, 2030 uh, is now in our hand uh, the entire process of nac needs to be aligned to nep 2020 at the same time we have also witnessed the sustainable development goals 2030 which uh, we are also signatory as a country so nep 2020 and sdg 2030 must uh, connect uh, with what nac processes are and at present we are, we are doing this exercise you know uh, for this purpose uh, we have come out with a, a white paper involving several experts across uh, our country and this white paper uh, is bringing the uh, or portraying uh, what are uh, the uh, necessary reforms for the future uh, main purpose of accreditation i must tell you uh, that it is not again uh, just to give you grades which you can display uh, on your website saying that i am a plus i am uh, uh, b or uh, that person is uh, c or whatever the purpose of accreditation actually is to improve quality Uh, that is the real objective of this entire process you know so raising the bar of quality of higher education and research in india and uh, i must tell you that uh, uh, for doing that uh, the nep has given several pointers and uh, uh, we are saying that uh, our existing process you know to look more at the input whatever universities are giving you know and the input driven process of assessment Uh, we think that it is not complete, and so we'll have to really change this input-based process to outcome-based process. So rather than uh, how much constructed area is there in your university, you know, uh, how much of acres of land is there in your university, it is more important to know, and not just number of faculty members in your university, but what is the quality of your faculty members in your university. how much of your students who come out of your university are really educated in the true sense because we differentiate now between the educated person uh, and a degree holder a person or university is maybe giving degrees but are you really creating educated people or educated students that is the real question it is not very easy to measure that but now with the help of uh, new technology like artificial intelligence Uh, and the uh, new initiatives of government of india uh, like one nation one data this is possible we are aware that institutions uh, colleges and universities have to undergo a lot of efforts you know to go on giving data to various agencies nac is asking you data nirf is asking you data ugc is asking you data aict is asking you data so you have to give same data multiple times and that takes lot of time of your staff faculty members etc so one nation one data now aict is uh, expediting uh, and uh, once that comes in the force actually one day will come that we may not even uh, need to ask you any data no that data will be retrieved from the national database and on a real time basis you know so our peer review teams when they visit uh, to campus you know Uh, they will be really actually as a facilitators uh, more than uh, kind of uh, inspecting uh, what is happening uh, on the campus so nacs role will be more also of hand holding helping more and more uh, uh, higher education institutes uh, to come forward to get accredited uh, today large number of colleges remain unaccredited and so that is our focus that how to bring them how to even motivate them to register first uh, with nac so that schemes like paramarsh which ugc has come out with can mentor a uh, lot of good institutions around uh, area wherein uh, these institutes which have not been yet uh, accredited uh, can be mentored you know and this kind of a mentor mentee relationship can help mutually you know because 
I, we, we are also aware that there are several colleges and universities which may be in very remote areas, rural areas, uh, in states where no sufficient uh, funding support is available. So they may not, uh, they should not suffer actually for no fault of theirs. So all these points, we need to bring in the new rubrics. The new rubrics has to be very, very uh, vital, very, very practical, very, 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 very fair and just. And we all are working together. Very soon, you will find that the draft white paper uh, will be uploaded on the website for the comments from larger community, uh, from academic community, as well as for people, you know. And based on this exercise, we hope to come out with a new, more robust, more fairer rubrics of uh, assessment and accreditation. And uh, with this, I would say that most important component of this will still remain academic research and research culture in your institution. And uh, the mere number of publications will not help you, you know, because the new rubrics uh, will not recognize. Forget about recognition, you may get discredit for doing some kind of unethical practices uh, in academics. You know? so, uh, my earlier talk, which was more about academic integrity and publication ethics and uh, these aspects, you know, I hope that the academic community and student community will take this very seriously, which will help in turn to improve uh, your NAC uh, assessment uh, and eventually grading and uh, therefore uh, to help in improving quality of education in your institute. Uh, with this, again, I uh, thank uh, uh, IGNU uh, for this opportunity. Namaskar. Jai Hind.